Hi, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Projection 3D tutorial. Today I will show you all the new things and features that we've added in the third version. So let's start with the main window and these three buttons here in particular. As you can see, we renamed this button here. We used to call it Find Camera, whereas now we call it Match Camera instead. So let's click on it and let's match the camera with this image really quickly. We need to reduce the camera's focal length. Okay. Now that we've matched the camera, we need to create a projection. So click this button and you can immediately see a pop-up window asking you how many copies you want to create. Before we used the pre-compose button to do that, but we got rid of it and now it's done with this pop-up window here. Now we learned from the comments to some of our early lessons that some of you guys couldn't understand the mechanisms behind creating projection copies. And so we decided to simplify it. Now it is much easier and clearer. You just match the camera with your image, you create a projection and select the amount of copies you need. And if you make a mistake with a number of copies and you need to add some new ones, then you just need to select one of the copies and click add scene. And that will create a new copy for you. And you'll see that it's actually much easier this way. Okay, we're done here. Let's move on to our generate menu. So if you click this generate button, a drop down menu with four options will open. We will talk about each of them separately. So the first one is generate position from point. So let's create a bottom plane and generate our position point on it. Now, if we click position from point, a null object will be created at the generated point. And by generating position point elsewhere and clicking option, we create another null object. And if you want to know what's the null object for, the answer is the null object has position parameters that can be copied, but positional point that can be copied. All right, now that everything is clear, let's look at the second option. The second option in generate menu is called position from vertex. And I guess you get the rough idea about it already. So let's draw a mask. Now look, if we select one of the vertices and click position from vertex, then we'll create a plane at the position of that vertex. See? Now if we select another vertex, we create a plane instead of that. If we pick the third one, we create a plane instead of it. Hope that makes sense. Okay, let's move on to the third one. Plane from points. This option performs the same function as generate plane from points. It's like we generate positional point, click on the corresponding option, and that creates a plane in that point. Okay, I think you get the idea. So now let's move on to the fourth option. Plane from different points. Let's create a second plane somewhere else. Now we have two different surfaces and let's say we must connect them with a third one. I'll switch to custom view and show it to you from this angle. Here's the first plane and here's the second one. Now let's generate position on the first one. Open the drop down menu and select plane from different points. This will bring out a small window. Select generated point and click get. Now the point parameters were copied and memorized. Select another plane and generate position on it. Then hit get at the bottom here. Now we have the parameters of both points. So let's create a plane. Great, now switch to custom view. And look, we have a plane that connects the other two. To make sure the surface intersects with a point, let's select it. See?
And here's the second one. It's a very cool option and it works great with cables and ropes and things like that. I will show you a better, a more clear example a little bit later. Alright, let's move on. The next new thing has to do with helper grid. Click it. And in the open window you can make the grid lines thicker or thinner. Alright. Let's move on. So we also added camera menu at the top, but we'll talk about that later. Now let me tell you about some major updates. If you watch the promo, you probably know that we've added the ability to import camera from FSPI to After Effects. It's a great solution to the camera matching problem. You no longer need to guess what focal length was used and so on. So now even the beginner can match the camera with very high precision. So let's see how it works. Go to FSPI IO. Scroll down and click the download button. Choose this one for Windows. Wait for it to download. Install it. After it's installed, the software will open automatically. So find that image and drag it into the software window. Now look, here in this software, the coordinate axes are arranged in a different way than in After Effects, and we should take this into account. So notice that Z axis looks up and not inwards. The red arrow shows X axis. Now let's say we need X to go from left to right and Y should be pointed inwards. Let's match it. Match the red lines according to the outline of the house. Then match the green ones. Good. Now look, Z axis is pointed downward, so we should fix that. To do this, change X to minus X in the X tab. Now, to see the grid, choose XY grid floor in the 3D guide tab. Great, now we can compare the lines. Notice that wherever I move the grid, all the lines are in check. See? Also here. So that's it, now I just need to export my camera. So I click File, Export, then Camera Parameters as JSON, give it a name and save it. Now I'll go to After Effects and drag this image into the timeline. To import camera, go to File, Import Camera FSPY, and import the camera that we've created. And that said, our camera is now where it needs to be. Look how all the lines match. Also look at the camera's focal length. See, we no longer need to guess what focal length the camera had during shooting. The software will find it automatically. Let's take another image and repeat what we just did. If it's kind of hard to see the image, uncheck this box. Match the x-axis lines. Or in with the bottom lines of the tower. Now we should find the lines that go into depth. We don't have much choice here. We should be content with these short intervals on the wall. Done. Let's enable the grid. Well, I think we could do better. The ground tilt doesn't match the grid and the reason is that Y-axis lines are too short. And so it's better to use Z-axis lines instead. So let's do that. Change Y to Z. Now match them again. 
Actually, let's use the left tower. And let's drag the second line here. Now, as you can see, the grid matches our image a lot better. Yes, that's great. Okay, let's go ahead and export camera. I'm going to call it camera 2 and I'll save it. Now I'll go to After Effects to import my camera. Let's take a look at the final result. Excellent, isn't it? Lines clearly follow the outline of the wall. Well, that's it. I hope that was useful. This software is very easy to learn. And if you still have any questions or you feel like you want to study it deeper, you can find many tutorials on YouTube. And let's move on to the next new thing. Now, maybe you remember this scene from the first Projection 3D version promo video. We didn't have so many tools and abilities to model complex objects back then. And so we created animated masks to remove those unnecessary areas. But it was a long and tedious process and no one likes sitting around rotoscoping for hours. Yes, so this is how we used to work with rough mesh. Look, it's just a cube. The mask hides the things we don't want in there and we only see the car. But now everything changed. We thought about this problem for a long time and finally found a completely different solution. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, we no longer need masks, so I'll delete it. I'll open this image in Photoshop. And I'll select the car using Quick Selection tool. Okay, great. Now I'll press Ctrl J and look, we've just separated the car from the background. So let's save this car with alpha channel. Click Ctrl S, choose PNG format, give it a name and save it. And so now I'll go back to After Effects and replace my projection image. As you can see now, nothing was projected onto the cube and remained white. So we only need to remove these white areas now. To do this, go to Utilities and select Clean Edges. And it's done. That's it. See? It took us only three minutes and the scene is ready. Isn't it great? Rough mesh is not a problem anymore. It's also a great solution for matte painting, BSD projects, where the final image already consists of separate objects with alpha channels, and you don't need to separate anything from the background. Now let's repeat our experience using another image. To make it clearer, for those of you guys who didn't work with the old versions, I'll show it to you in more detail here. Now take a look. We have a project here with three projection scenes. I matched the camera in advance and created three projection scenes. First one for the foreground objects, second one for the Colosseum, and the third one for the ground and the background. You guys already know how to create models of different objects, and if you don't know, you can go ahead and study it from our modeling tools tutorial. Now I just need to model the Colosseum, and we'll do it together right now. So. Here we have a bottom plane, but it is disabled so that nothing is projected on it. So we will only use it to generate the position of the Colosseum. 
So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll add a cylinder primitive, open anchor point editor, mark reposition anchor point and move it to the bottom. I'll scale the primitive, move it to the left a little bit, scale it a little more, uncheck scaling on all axes and reduce the primitive along Y. Done. We have a rough model now. Now let's go to the main comp. Okay, now we have to clean up these unwanted areas. Let's do that. So I'll click replace projection image. Here we already have a Coliseum image with alpha channel, which we made in advance in Photoshop. So select it and press OK. OK, now use clean edges. Great, now all those areas are gone and the building remains. So that's awesome. As you can see, this thing allows you to achieve results very quickly without much effort. And if you don't have Photoshop at hand, you can mask it in After Effects. Like this. And save it as image with alpha channel. Go to composition menu, click save frame as file, make it PNG. Choose where you want to save it and render. Done. All you have to do now is replace projection image with the newly created one. It's a very important, useful and time saving feature and it rids you of the necessity to rotoscope, so that's great. Okay, we're done with this, so let's move on to the next new thing we have. As you guys already know, we've improved Revolve tool, and now we get more control over it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So we have a glasses of beer here. Now, first of all, let's match our camera. I'll be using these lines on the wall. Okay, great. Let's make a projection. Double click projection scene two. I should create a bottom plane to generate position of the glass. So I'll do that. It should be in the center of the glass. Then I'll create a plane using generate plane from points. So why is it important that it's in the center of the glass precisely? So I'll show it to you now. Switch to custom view. Now, as you can see, the plane is in the center of the glass. So if we now draw a mask and use revolve, it will put all the segments in the right place like this. But if you generate position and create a plane here on the edge, then after rotating, the segments will be put like so. Okay, always keep that in mind. So hope this makes sense. And now I will show you one more thing. Go back to active camera and look, the Z arrow is not pointed at the camera, but to the left. This means that we are looking at the plane at an angle. And after rotation, the segments will be put like this. But we need them to be placed like so, and that's towards the camera. So open Revolve tool. There's a new button here called Orient Towards Camera. So if you click it, the plane will be put at the right angle. Let me show it to you more clearly. So switch to custom view. Look, this is our camera and that's a plane. So I click orient towards camera and look, now the plane is at the right angle and after we rotate it, the segments will be put like this. It is very important to always remember these two rules. You need to generate position in the center of your round object 
and the plane where you draw a mask must be pointed at the camera. Okay, let's continue. So I'll draw a mask. Okay, now I'll create surface. Good, we have a round object. And now let's look at the edges. As you can see, the surface has gone beyond the boundaries of the glass. And there's some problems here. So I'll press Ctrl Z several times to get back to the mask. First, I'll increase the number of segments to make the model more round. Let me change the color of the mask so you could see it better. Now I'll click Mirror Path. As you can see, a new mask was created, but it doesn't follow the outline of the glass. So let's fix that. This new mask gives us more control, and that's what we need right now. Now I'll select both masks and I'm going to create a surface. Good, let's check that. There's some space left here. And it overlaps over here. Okay, so I'll press Ctrl Z to go back. Let's raise up these three. Great. And let's move the mask a bit from the edge over to the inside of the glass. Again, select both masks and click Create Surface. Let's see. Looks like here we also need to move the mask inside. Good. Let's check it out again. Yes, looks much better. Of course, we can also fix it here. Like this. And create surface again. Perfect. Now the model completely covers the glass. As you can see, the new Revolve tool gives you more control of the process and it creates some very accurate copies. And that's great. It's a very useful tool. You'll see that. I'm sure you're going to use it very often. Look how many round objects here in this room. Okay, let's move on. All right, so now let's talk about the Surface Modeler. This is a completely new tool for surface modeling and without a doubt, it's the most important update of this new version. So this tool helps you do your work and it will save you a lot of time. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. Go to Tools menu and find Surface Modeler. So in FSpy section of the tutorial, we match the camera and created projection. And now we can start modeling. First, we need to generate position for the garage and create plane using generate plane from points. So let's stretch the plane and draw a mask along the contour of the wall. Now we no longer need to generate position of the side wall, create planes or rotate them 90 degrees as we did it before. Now instead, we just need to select two vertices and get them uh, to make this tool remember them. So first one, and the second one. And now I'll create a polygon. As you can see, we created a new polygon where we selected the vertices. So the place where the polygon is created depends on which vertices you've selected. So let's see. For example, if I select these two vertices here, a polygon will be created and it will be pointed in the direction of these vertices. See? And then you can rotate it like this. Pretty cool, isn't it? 
Select these two and a new polygon will be created, pointed in the direction of these vertices. Amazing, right? So then you can select these two and create a polygon there, or these two, and so on. Okay, let's get back to our scene. Let's rotate the plane 90 degrees along the X, and again, or you can rotate 45 degrees using this button, or 180 degrees with this one. And using buttons below, you can rotate the plane along the Y. Okay, great. Let's put the plane back in place. We need to stretch it a little bit more to completely cover the side wall. And our garage is done. Now let's generate position for the house. Cool. I'll create a plane now. I'll stretch it. Mask it. Now select this vertex and click get. Then select the second one, get it, and create a polygon. Fix its direction. Now guys, sometimes it happens so that the plane is smaller than the mask and it doesn't cover the whole object, see? So if this happens, then you should stretch the plane and fix the mask. And that's it. As you can see, modeling now got easier and faster. All right, now let's model a more complex kind of object. Previously, without this new tool, modeling of this ship would have been very difficult because of its oval shape and using a plane would be wrong here. But with Surface Modeler, we'll create this ship in minutes. So if you're ready, let's do this. So first I'll generate position for it. And create a plane on that position. Now we need to rotate the plane so that it has the same orientation with the ship. Good. Now mask the front part. Great, we've created the first polygon. Let's see how it looks from custom view. So further modeling will be similar to polygon modeling and 3D software. Let's select this vertex and click get. And now another one. Now in order to make sure the tool don't forget the selected vertices after a polygon is created, check interactive and click create polygon. Great, it's there. Let's rotate it to repeat the oval shape of the ship. And then adjust the vertices. Okay, I'll create another polygon. Rotate it. Adjust those. And let's see if we've got ourselves our oval surface. Yes. Look, everything's all right. So let's continue. Let's create a new polygon. Give it proper orientation. Adjust the vertices. Okay, now for the last one. Rotate it. Adjust. Looks like a new vertex needed here. Great, we're done with the right side. Now let's check it from custom view. Very good. Look at the oval shape we've got.
Now let's move on to the left side. Select the front polygon and get the left side vertices. Create one. Cool. Now rotate it using this 90 degree button. Let's check it out. I think we need to rotate it a little more. Okay, that's enough. Now let's adjust the vertices. Add a new one here and also here. And that's it. We did the frame. Now let's do the sails. So I'll go ahead and select the bottom plane and generate position. Then I'll create a plane on that position. Switch to custom view. Now let's see from the top view. Good. It's in the right place, but let's move it a little over to the left. We also need to rotate it to give it the same orientation uh, with the ship. Perfect. That's taken care of. Now go back to active camera. Now I just have to draw a mask. So let's do that. All right, let's check it. Yes, everything is great. To create a second sail, just duplicate the first one with Ctrl D and move it back. Delete the old mask. Draw a new one. Okay. All right, guys, let's see what we have here. See, we've created a complex object and it's physically correct, but that's not all. This tool will help you model even the smallest of details. We can model even wooden beams and ship ropes. Let me show you how. So select the frontal polygon. Generate position here. Create plane on that position. Now we need to give this plane that beam orientation. So rotate it along the X. Okay, let's check it from the left. Yes, that's what we needed. Go back to active camera view. Draw a mask. And let's check it. Yep, everything is okay. Okay guys, time to make a rope. It connects the beam to the mast, so we have to generate positions on different surfaces. This is what these three points are for. So I'll select the sail layer and generate position at the top of the mast. Then I'll click point one. Now select beam layer and generate position on that beam. 
click point two and use create polygon using points. Very well. Look, a new plane has been created right where we needed it. Now select the plane. And as you can see, there's a mask there, but we don't need it now, so I'll delete it. I'll draw a new one. Okay, great. Let's check it from custom view. Very well. The rope weighs just the way it should. As you can see, this new tool is simply amazing. You can create almost anything with it. All these small details can be modeled. But then what's the difference in generating positions in different surfaces using this tool or the one that I show you at the beginning? The difference is that there is a third point here, but here there are only two. Now let me show you another example. Look, here we have two triangles connected together. If we add a third one, we get ourselves a pyramid. Let's try to do it with this tool. We've created a surface that intersects with triangles, but we didn't find the orientation for the surface in space. See? If we do this manually, it's gonna make it difficult. This is why we need a third point. So go back uh, through Ctrl Z so that only triangles remain. Now let's do the same, only let's use the second tool. First point, Second point, let's make a plane. Look, there's already a mask on the plane and we see that triangle and this makes things easier for us. But for the proper orientation, we still need the third point. So press Ctrl Z. Select this vertex and click point three. Create a polygon. And as we already see, the triangle intersects with the rest everywhere and we get ourselves a pyramid. So the difference is that the first one can quickly create ropes and cables and those sorts of things. But for things like roof sides, Surface Modeler is a lot more convenient. Okay, so that will be it. Let's move on and get back to our ship. So what we're going to do in this bit is we're going to animate our ship. Okay, so this is a ready model I made. I'm pretty sure you can figure out all the small details yourselves. So I'll go ahead and disable the bottom plane. Then I'll select all parts of the ship and I'll group them together. We don't need this anymore. Keep in mind that in this copy of the projection, only animated objects should stay. If you did the sea, rocks and sky, then move them to another projection copy. Okay, let's select our ship and try to move it. As you can see, nothing happens. This is because we moved the object, but projector wasn't moving. We need to move both of those together. To do that, go to tools and choose independent object. Try to move it again. Good, now it's moving. You can add keys and animate. So let's pre-render. See? Let's quickly make other objects. Using helper grid properties, create bottom and back planes, stretch them to cover the image,
Now there's a ship in one copy and another one has the rest of the environment. If you erase the ship in Photoshop and replace projection image in this copy, only the environment will remain. Look, here I have a second image without a ship. As you can see, it's just like I told you, nothing peeking from behind anymore. Here I did the same. I created a car model and applied independent object to it. But here I animated the car using null object to create the path. You can create null object using position from point. I also added shadow using black solid with a mask and linked them to the same null object. Look, this is just a, a 3D solid. And here is a mask with mask feather applied. Okay, that's all done. Let's move on. Here we will learn how to replace projection camera with a tracked camera. This is a very cool feature and now you can easily combine a capture shot with a projection. So here we have a ready-made projection scene and we'll only replace the cameras. But first, let's just go to hollowwoodcamerawork.com, choose green screen plates and download this clip called main HD plate. So I'll unzip that. Double click and delete this text file. Then drag it to After Effects project window. Create a new com. The projection size and the size of the clip must be the same. In my case, it's 9020, 1080. Drag it to the timeline. Reduce duration to video. Now press Ctrl Alt F to match the video with the comp. And look, if I press track camera now, it will result in an error at the end because we stretched the footage. To avoid this, remove camera tracker. Go to layer menu and choose pre-compose. And click track camera again. Move the time indicator forward on the timeline so that the track points appear on the floor. Then select points, right click and choose set ground plane and origin and then create camera. Okay, great. Now that the camera's created, we can open projection 3D. Go to this menu here and insert camera. Now here we need to select the camera we've created. Click OK and we see that the camera is selected. Now I'll go to projection scene 1 and click insert. As you can see the camera is replaced. So I'll click here and disable original image because we don't need it now. Great, I also need to create a bottom plane for position. Okay, cool. Go to that composition with a girl, copy footage and put it in projection scene one. And then drag down the bottom plane. Select girl footage, delete 3D camera tracker. And now apply key light. Pick color from here. And create a mask to hide some of that stuff. So I'll mask her like this. As you can see guys, the character does not correspond to the scale of the environment. But we 
can't adjust that using camera because it's tracked and if we touch it, we'll spoil the keys. So that's why we also use camera controller. So click P and shift R to open position and rotation parameters. And I'll adjust position and the environment using these parameters. Now I can change position of the girl since this is 2D. So we must match the environment for her. Okay, set X rotation to minus 12. Now use position X and Z to adjust projection position so that the white area disappears. Good. Now let's rotate along Y axis a little bit more and adjust position again. Okay, cool. Let's also adjust the Y. Then again, X and Y. A little bit more adjustment here. Great, that's enough. Now we have correct position and now the girl is in the right place. Let's make pre-render to see the result. Well, as you can see, this is not what we wanted. The floor slides under her feet and that's because we adjusted her position in the scene, but the scale of the camera and the scale of our scene uh, doesn't match. But it's easy to fix that. So disable key light, select bottom plane and generate position. Here, it's important to note that you need to generate position closer to your character. I'm generating it here under the foot because the character is not moving. If your character moves during animation, then you should select the closest marker, like this. Okay, so generate position near the foot and click 3D position. Good. 3D position is now copied. Now let's get our girl and click 2D position. Oh yes, we need to move forward on the timeline. The time indicator should not be on the first frame while we generate a 2D position. Click again and we see the 2D position controller appear. And here's what's important. We generated position in the same place where we generated a 3D position. Click Calculate Scale, that's it. Enable Key Light. Now let's see. That's great. Now the character's in the place and the floor works perfectly well. I'll fix the mask here. Well, now we have our matched camera in projection scene one. So now let's copy it to other projection scenes. So I'll select the camera and the controller, copy them, go to projection scene two and paste them there. And also paste them in projection scene three. Go back to the first one, cut the girl footage, go to main comp and paste it. Done. Let's pre-render and see what we have. Amazing, right? Everything works great. So now we can easily integrate our characters into the 3D environment that we create from stills. Isn't that amazing? Right. Okay, let's get to the next one. Guys, if for some reason you moved your camera in the main comp and you want to get back to the default position, let's say you wanted to look at the object's movement but 
it didn't put the camera back to its place and you continued modeling. And now it's too late. Control Z won't help here. So how do you get the camera back? The answer is very simple. Select one of the projection scenes, go to camera menu and choose default view. And that's it. The camera is now in its default position. Look again, wherever you move your camera, you can always get it back to its default position using default view. Okay, next one. So guys, if for some reason you want to look at the object from the front, you can use the view selected. Select object, go to camera menu and choose view selected. See, you get a new object oriented camera. And in the view section, there's a new custom camera view. So click it and, and you'll see the object from the front. So from this angle, we can save the front of the garage as a texture, then save the sides of the garage and put them back in place. And then it will actually make it a genuine 3D object made of textures. And you can change it as you like. like for example, you can draw graffiti on the doors. So this option will allow you to quickly create custom camera focused on the object you've chosen. Okay, that's all for this one. Looks like we've studied all the new things in the third version. I hope this was useful. After all, we worked very hard to make all of this possible to really simplify your work and make it faster. So thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.